two years of experience within this industry and when I look around I don't see a lot of minorities um, in positions either middle management or upper management. I do see a lot of minorities participating in diversified schemes but I don't see them sort of progressing up the ladder. I mean, the diversity of British society has become more and more complex. The kind of society that you had um, in Britain even sort of 60, 70 years ago, if they were to come now, they wouldn't recognise, particularly the urban cities. I'm not sure that um, all museums and galleries have really caught up with those changes in society. Research shows that 93% of the workforce in museums and galleries is white. And that doesn't surprised me too much because, you know, think about what these places look like and what they feel like and what it feels like for someone who doesn't have a particular background or a particular um, cultural uh, investment in, um, in national museums to enter these places for the first place. It's important, I think, not to underestimate how intimidating, in fact, that can be. How galleries present themselves probably does alienate a certain type of audience. I must admit I have a problem with statistics because they don't reveal the whole story. For example, if you take that statistic, 93% white, the, the gallery sector, in fact the population of Britain is 93% white. Now you could conclude that ethnic minorities actually are equally represented in the gallery sector as they are in the wider population. Whereas quite clearly I feel as though we need more representation what I notice is that the minorities that are at the top of the sector tend to be heads of organizations that have to do with minority issues. So, um, you know, you see people who are heads of, you know, sort of an African museum or, uh, you know, or something having to do with like diversity issues. Um, but you don't see a lot of minorities at the top of sort of mainstream organizations. You don't see them at head of the VNA or, you know, organizations like that. So I, I think for a lot of um, um, so-called ethnic minorities, they don't, still don't know that it's an option for them to kind of be creative, but actually be a project manager, be a high level, be a leader within the cultural industries. I've probably restricted myself to some of the types of jobs that I've gone for. Right? Most immigrants, background um, families, I think they won't want their, 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 their children to kind of go into something that they're not um, sure of. I think, I think the arts is a bit of a mystery. It's not seen as cool or um, financially viable to, you know, work in the art industry. So, yes, most people in the arts tend to be white because there's a very strict notion, I think, of what it, what it means to be part of the arts and to work in the arts. And when I was doing my A-levels, I was the only black person in my class. And then when I went on to art school, it was a similar thing. So. For me, it makes sense that obviously you're not going to suddenly have an influx of various cultures employed in the arts if they didn't actually do any of the initial training in the arts. We need more role models, I would say, in the arts community um, because we are lacking a few senior representatives in that sector. I think diversity schemes are really useful and I'm actually quite impressed with the number of diversity schemes I've seen in the UK compared to the US. Um, I think they're doing a great job of giving minorities the opportunity to at least test themselves within the museum sector, the cultural industry um, as a general matter. I think the good sides to the diversity schemes are that people who don't, who, who won't get a chance in, in, real, in, in, in normal life would get a chance to um, be placed so within example, mainstream organisations, really, you know, big mainstream organisations like the Tate, for example. And that's fantastic, you know, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be able to, to get a foot in the door otherwise. I think on the downside is that it kind of creates resentment within those organisations, for, for, for one. I think, you know, you know why, why should you fast track somebody because of their ethnic origin? I do favour diversity schemes because I think some impetus needs to be given to trying to make some headway in these areas. Isolated initiatives towards diversity and recruitment don't have an overwhelming impact because they work in isolation and you have to approach everything simultaneously. I think diversity schemes can be useful and can be good, 
um, only though if they are supported, if they're sustainable. Often in the schemes that I've seen or been part of, sometimes it feels as though, again, it's about ticking boxes, that the schemes are more for the organisation to say we're, we're doing this in diversity or we're doing that in diversity, they're ticking a box, than the career trajectory and path of the person that it's, it's supposed to be serving. You can't rely on these types of schemes solely. I think the industry as a whole, the leaders within the museum industry have to sort of think it's important and once these schemes are over, fight really hard to retain the people who've come into the industry through these entry-level programs. I think there's a lot of pressure on those trainees to kind of be, be everything really. You have to be, you have to prove yourself. I mean, it would be, probably make a lot more sense if, you know, the diversity schemes and so on actually thought and went straight to the grassroots and went to secondary schools and, you know, on foundation courses, A-level courses, degrees, and actually encouraged, you know, a, a love of the arts. I don't think there's a shortage of a diversity of people that would really want to work in the arts, in the cultural sector, in the heritage sector. Uh, if you combine the legislative framework, which is the if I don't, with the goodwill framework, which is wouldn't it be good if, then you will get change. I think legislation alone won't do it. Yes, I do think things will improve. Because, you know, the, the population in this country is changing enormously. So I think the demographic is just going to dictate it. And I think people are going to be much more aware that there is, as well as the morals, there is, a, there is a, an economic and a business case. I, I just think it's still breaking down barriers so people feel that's an organisation that I will feel comfortable in and I want to work in and I can identify with. Um, I um, think there is a real issue around recruitment to boards. I think there is a real issue around representation on boards and that um, there's always talk of diversity and of a necessity to grapple with issues of diversity, but I think there's not very much experience of doing that in a sophisticated, imaginative way. This has got to come from the very top and say, this is what we want to achieve. And for me, the, the achievement will be when we actually stop counting. beyond the gallery walls make sure that people realise there are opportunities. We have to change some of the language around how you present work. Be more proactive and dynamic about recruiting. Take on board diversity prioritisation for the long run. Positive encouragement to get people to actually put their names forward. It's the leadership at the top of organisations that really are going to make the most difference in this.